Welcome to the Fantasy Football Hub YouTube channel for another Double Game Week 7 preview. Today, I'm here, joined by the big man, Bakar. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of talk this week, some, some flags, some injuries. We need some advice, Bakar. We do. We really, really do. First of all, I'm sorry to mention it. Uh, not, not the greatest of weeks for you last week. We're going to get into that and see where it may have gone gone wrong or what your plans are for, for amending, amending your team, perhaps in future. But first of all, you have been... Well, you were red flagged. You're now yellow flagged, I guess. Your finger is on the mend. How is it? It is. I mean, I've gotten uh, rid of the nail that was uh, planted after the surgery. And now I've been recommended physiotherapy by the doctor for the next four to five weeks. Uh, it's stiff, but I mean, it's it's finally nice to have gotten rid of that nail that was inside my finger. So yeah, hopefully I can find my mobility back. Uh, both in FPL and in real life. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Let's get into it. I mean, look, not not the greatest of weeks. Not a huge red arrow, I will say. You yeah, know. I mean, it wasn't that bad. It was all right. I mean, I, I got, what, 69 points? Uh, yeah. I would say it was below par, but it's all right. I mean, my team, I think I, uh, you know, uh, my team looks all right. It's just one of those seasons where we'll, there will be one of those, you know, there will be high variance weeks. And this was one of them. I think game week... Six was a high range week where, you know, I saw people who scored over 100 points. There were yeah. a few I saw who scored nearly 50. I was close to 70, which is, which is fine. I, I don't really mind that. It's It wasn't really a disaster. The team looks fine going forward. I'm not overly concerned. So, yeah, it's about making sure that I get the, the decisions going forward correct. And as, as, as long as I nail my wild card. I, I think I'll I'll be fine. That is the first thing that I actually want to ask you today is 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 wildcard. You've mentioned it to me that, that you know you're not entirely sure yourself on when when you're gonna play it. Any more thoughts on that over the past few days this game week? Um any recommendations to our viewers as to, to what might be a good window? I think it's very team dependent. So for someone like me, I don't have Saka, I don't have Chilwell. Uh, I mean I have Chilwell, but I can sell them for one one free transfer. I uh, don't have. I mean, Botman is is yellow flagged. I mean, let's let's assume if he's out. So I don't have most of the flag players uh, in my team. I don't have Jackson either. So I mean, my team is in a position where I can sort of sort it out with just one free transfer. So I don't really have to play it right now. And ideally, I want to hold it for the swings after game week eight or nine. Yeah. I am very very set on not playing it over the next two weeks because I have. Uh, double spurs already i have a doggy i have sun and i think for someone like me um if i have spurs for their next few fixtures i think liverpool at home this week is a good fixture for someone like a son then next week luton and then for fulham in, in game week nine i think i'm fine for the next few weeks after that spurs is fixtures turn and then that that is a window where i can then sort of get more villa players in, possibly get rid of one of bruno rashford get rid of sterling you know get rid of mbumo maybe Maybe Alvarez, maybe even the Newcastle defense because their defense yeah, fixtures will exactly. turn as well at that point. So, you know, there are a lot of things that will change over the coming weeks. And I think that as of now, uh, my team is is in good shape. And I think there's uh, the more optimal use of the wild card is to play it around game week 9 or 10, particularly for my team. But obviously, it's team dependent. If someone does not have Spurs uh, or United in their team, let's say, at at this point, they can use the wildcard to get their players on Newcastle. Uh, you know, I have Trippier already. If you don't have any Newcastle defense, someone with triple Chelsea, I can see a lot more need for it right now. Yeah, fair enough. So you're not nailing yourself to a to a um a specific game week for for the wildcard yet, which I think is sensible yeah. because you know things are still changing week on week. Just a couple of weeks ago, we were all in on 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 triple Chelsea and and, and look how that's turned out. Uh, yeah, I remember you, you tweeted a couple of days ago. What was it? The cumulative points of, of Jackson, Sterling yeah. and Chilwell in the past two game weeks? Six points? Is that what it was? Six points. from Unbelievable. Unbelievable. From three players in across two games. That's, yeah, that's, that's literally unbelievable. unbelievable. I, I've owned five of them, so it's been painful. I, <sighs> I, I'm not even kidding. I, I hold Jackson partly responsible for uh, for for a bad start this season he's been in my team from since game week one and yeah. i think i've been i think i've been unlucky maybe i held on him for a week or so too long but over the course of four or five weeks he was a good option but you know i should have gotten more points that didn't really turn out to be the case but it is what it is yeah what can you do we move on we move on now before we get into the the specifics of your team and, and your plans for this week i do just want to mention this is the final time i'm going to mention this this is 
the last day today before the 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 um the game week seven deadline a double game week seven deadline that if you sign up to fantasy football hub you can take advantage of the offer win your mini league or get your entire money back no mat- no matter what 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 price tier you sign up at no matter what what level if you do not win your mini league this season then you get all your money refunded it's an amazing deal it's going away after this game week so from from saturday at whatever the deadline is is done so you have to do it now last little push link down below if you want to get involved and, and and you know mess around with everything that you're about to see in this video all the stats the ai transfers just the, the site in general it's brilliant Bakar uses it every minute of every day don't you i love it i love it especially that's the a resounding yes recommended a resounding transfers yes. tool oh absolutely is it the opt tools i i mean i use them very very frequently okay then let's get into it my friend how many transfers do you have 0.5 million in the bank what are you One. thinking one free transfer. Okay. Yeah, one, one free transfer. Yeah, one free transfer. 0.5 million in the bank. Uh, my initial thoughts on on Sunday after the games ended were to possibly save a transfer after the gusto red card. I sort of thought that I could play Chilwell this week because I mean it's an okay fixture against Fulham, and then I can go into next week with two free transfers. But as fate would would have it, probably for the better, uh, Chilwell got injured in the EFL Cup game versus Brighton. And it looks like a serious problem. I don't think he'll be available for the weekend or for any time soon because Pochettino did sort of say that it's a, a hamstring injury. So, I mean, that basically nails down my transfer. I don't think Chilwell is a hard sell for those, let's say, who have a Man City defender this week or who could play the likes of Bear um, this week. I don't think he's a hard sell. You can sort of get away with uh, with benching children for one week or for those who are with Gabriel or Sleep. I think that's that's perfectly fine as well. But for my team, I I don't want to play Stupin and I think Willa is a tough fixture. Willa will score. Brighton away from home aren't really inspiring. Even at home, their defense has been leaky this season. Okay. So I don't want to put myself in a position where I play Stupin and, and Odogi has Liverpool. So he isn't an option either. So I think it's it's going to be a issue which will persist for my team going forward. And I just want to get rid of it and just get a solid player in for the next two to three weeks before I likely wild card. So who are you thinking of? Who's going to be in that in that slot? I mean, there are three or four options. Um, at this point in time, I look at the Newcastle defense and they're looking very, very promising, both underlying data-wise and fixture-wise. I think they will keep two clean sheets in the next three fixtures even though i have prepared i look at each pick in isolation so yeah. i would like to give myself you know the chance of doubling up on defense um now this is interesting because i think botman is the best pick but apparently there's this quote from eddie howe which just you know he has a knee problem and... yeah i'm not i'm not sure about that we know what how's like don't we we know what he's yeah, like exactly. he's done I mean, this over the years exactly Exactly. I mean, you have to take what he says with a pinch of salt, but I guess it's different for owners and it's different for Completely. someone who is still yet to, to buy him. Yeah, very so, valid. So, of course, I have, to wait for the, uh, I have to wait for the Friday press conference and then I can sort of decide. I mean, let, let's say if he completely rules bottom now, then of course there's no way I'm going to go for him, right? I mean, I, I do obviously agree with you and I do think that, you know, he was merely using it as an excuse to rest him for the, for the cup game, but um i've got to wait for information i've got to wait for news and if if it looks like he'll be fine then i'll I'll get botman i think he's the best option but let's say if he sort of rules him out then then it's it's interesting because then i have to look at one of the other options like either share or uh burn and burn is ill as well so i don't know uh the how how much i trust how honestly because he's basically ruled half of half of the squad out i mean wilson he, he said wilson is injured i think isaac has been playing with an injury as well um, so yeah, I mean, let's let's wait for news tomorrow. But as of now, I think the Newcastle defense is, is the place to go to. I really like the underlying data, and I'm very happy to have jumped on Trapier a week early. Um, now that everyone's getting him, yeah. If I let's say if I wasn't to choose the Newcastle defense, then I like Cash, but it's it, his underlines are great. He's uh, he's great for big chance involvements and XGI uh, attacking wise this season. Uh, but I am not entirely convinced that Aston Villa will keep Brighton out. Brighton have an elite attack, and I think Brighton will score against Villa. And even Wolves next week isn't the easiest fixture. Wolves away. So uh, even though I love 
cash and I think he's an explosive pick. I do think the time for him is, is after game nine because, I mean, essentially the bread and butter for defenders is clean sheets, right? Uh, yeah. Then there's Diego Dalo from United. I mean, United haven't really been great this season defensively, but they have plenty of players coming back. Um, and, you know, the fixtures are good as well. Crystal Palace at home, Brentford at home, then Sheffield United away. So I think Dalo's a good, nice alternative. I don't think he's a bad pick at all. These are the options that I'm considering. If someone is in the position where he doesn't own Trippier, I think Chilwell to Trippier should be number one priority because Trippier is hands down the best defender to pick in the game right now. Fair enough. Fair enough. People would say that, that Trippier is expensive because he is, right? And maybe if you don't have that wild card and you're thinking of how am I going to get to Salah for the, that incredible run of fixtures, is Trippier a little bit too much there? Is, is, he, is he one of the players that you potentially would sacrifice to enable a, a Salah when you look at the value perhaps of of Botman or, or even Shah now, to be fair, Botman's getting close to that price. Yes, that, that's a very good question. And it's worth mentioning that we are sort of moving towards a phase where everyone's going to want the likes of Salah, Sun, Haaland in the same team. Even Sun is, I can fit that into the same bracket because, yeah. you know, if he's playing number nine in that team, which is creating so many chances and if he's on penalties... A clinical finisher like him, I think you can class him in that category, especially when you look at the fixtures. I mean, I think he's going to be the most captain player in Game Week 8 versus Luton, right? So if someone is wildcarding, now I don't think I would get prepared. That is right, because I would rather go with the cheap Newcastle defenders and I would just swerve prepare. But let's say if, if people are in the position where they're looking to wild card in game week nine or ten, like a lot of managers are, then Trippier is a bit of a no-brainer. Yeah, get him in for the good fixtures and then yeah, once the fixtures turn a little bit, makes sense to me. Let's talk about um the double game week players. You have one, Kabore. Are you expecting big things from this man? Are you starting him this week? And are you potentially going to get any other doublers in? I think uh, Kabore is a good pick this week. I, uh, you know, the, the main talk, the main poster boy for the double game week has been Morris because he's the 90-minute guy who's nailed on penalties. But I think Kabore is a very underrated pick. Even though I don't rate the um, Luton defense that highly, Kabore is, is good going forward. And especially if he has two games, there's every chance that he can nick uh, attacking return or something. He's had three big chance involvements in four starts so far. So the attacking numbers are looking promising. I was actually half considering playing him last week versus Wolves ahead of Chilwell. Wow. And I We've just did good. not have the balls to do that. Nah. I was actually I was actually very close to doing that. And I, I regret not backing my instinct enough. But I am very happy to have him this week and I have no problems for starting him. Yeah, fair enough. And then in terms of Morris, he is the one that, I mean, a lot of people that, that have Jackson already probably have already made that move. Would you would you definitely make that move, a, a Jackson to Morris? Again, this is very team dependent. If you're looking to wildcard in game week, let's say if you're committing to wildcard in game week 8, 9, then I think Morris makes complete sense and he's the obvious transfer. And I mean, his stats aren't great. He's had, what, less than one XG, non-pen XG, in five, six games so far. So his numbers are terrible. But yeah. it's a, I mean, it's a roll of the dice. You can fluke a penalty, you can fluke a goal here. There are obviously, I don't think there's um, enough of a ceiling there to target. But if you have Jackson, if you want a wildcard in eight or nine, then I would definitely pick him. And how about Morris as an eighth attacker, perhaps? I mean, like you have Alvarez here. I also have Alvarez. There's no way for me that I'd sell Alvarez to to Morris, even with a wild card to use. I think I just, you know, Alvarez is still a very good pick for the, you know, upcoming, well, big, big lump of fixtures, really. But as an eighth attacker that you could play for this week and then bench, any credence behind that? I mean, now there are two or three scenarios to this. I mean, let's assume you still have a wild card left, right? Yeah. So if you still have a wild card left, then... The problem with picking Morris as the eighth attacker is that A, you're going to be benching a very good player um, for him. Let's say someone like a Mpumo or, or Madison or someone like that. Uh, the other problem is that you're restricting yourself from, um, let's say, for example, that one million might help you in getting Salah later. So you're restricting yourself from having that 
budget later on. So I don't necessarily like the idea of doing that. If you're on a wild card and if you're doing it, then even then I don't like it because the problem is that with so many good picks, like we've discussed, you would want that 1 million at some point. So it's like booking a transfer sooner rather than later just to get those funds out of uh, out of Morris in the eighth playable attacker. So uh, yeah, I don't I don't like it either way, with or without a wild card. Fair enough. Okay, last point on Morris, and uh, I'm playing devil's advocate here because I will be completely transparent. He is not coming into my team. He's not even in my thoughts. But what if you thought that he was the best captain option this week? Would he then be worth a transfer in to captain? And do you think he is a viable alternative to Haaland? I do think he's a good captaincy option. Okay. For sure. I, yeah. I, I don't refute that. I don't refute that. But I don't think I have the conviction to say that he's definitely the best captaincy option this week. I think it's very, very, very marginal between him and Haaland. Because when you look at Haaland, he's going to get 90 minutes against the Wolves defense that's been very leaky this season. Their uh, XG data isn't all that great. They're conceding around 2 XG per game. And with the City attack, you'd expect City to score, you know, at least two to three goals. So if, if that's the case, then you're effectively betting on Morris to score at least once or get, get you one attack in return. I, as of now, like I've said, I think the max I can see him getting is one return. So I, I'm not really sure whether that's worth bringing him in and then transferring him out later as well. If you're on wildcard in game week eight, then it makes more sense. That's true. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. To, to make two transfers for just one, you know, the ceiling being one return. So what, 11 points? Is that really worth it when you have Harlan there who, who's yeah. you know, got a decent fixture anyway and has more predicted points according to the, the site? I'm not entirely sure. I want to talk about your midfield now because... I'm looking through your team. Pickford, yeah, has, has been poor this season in terms of FPL. And, you know, every, every owner has not been happy. But you're not going to sell him before these two plum fixtures. The defense now, I think, with, with Chilwell out, kind of picks itself. I mean, it's up to you who you go for with that that, that Chilwell slot. So, obviously, going to wait until, until deadline to see who you go for there. But the rest is very, very solid. And likewise, in, in attack, you're not going to change that. I don't, I don't see this week or maybe for, for a good few game weeks. Midfield though, I have a very similar midfield to you. Four out of the four out of the five, and four of these players. I mean, well, minimum three don't look great right now. Let's start with Rashford, and and your thoughts on United as a whole. Uh, Rashford, Bruno, Sterling are basically the guys you're referring to. No, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. Honestly, I'm not because I don't mind Bruno. I, I just I really love Bruno as a player. The other player I'm referring to is in Burmo. That's the other one. I, I'm I'm just not sure. Yeah, right yeah. Now. All the all these. Yeah, I mean, all these guys have. It is all of they're them. To be fair, guys yeah. who they're, they're they're ninety minute guys who look good on paper. Rashford and Bruno. I mean, United haven't really convinced convinced me as an attacking force going forward. Honestly, I mean, I uh, it's a decision that I'll make on wildcard. I'm happy to keep both of them for the next three fixtures. Really? Because I still trust them to to yeah. I'm happy to okay. hold them for the next three fixtures. I still trust them to to keep ticking along. I but I don't necessarily see them as explosive because I don't really see them scoring five six goals in a game like you know someone like Spurs could easily do against Luton. Yeah. Right. Or someone like Liverpool could do. I mean Salah could do that um, in in his fixtures from game week nine to ten. I can see these guys keep ticking along with the points and the fact that you know Bruno and Pomo these guys are on penalties that helps. Rashford, I'm still sort of, I want to see more of him playing with with Hoyland because um, I'm not entirely convinced yet to, about his goal threat because you know early earlier on the season even previous season we we did see that when he was playing on the left with you know Martial or Weghorst he was having plenty of shots. His stats aren't exactly great; they're not terrible either, but they're not as good as they were. So it's it's a case of you know I'm 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 holding him for. The next three fixtures and hoping that he gets let's say one to two goals in in that period with you know an assist here or there and then that's a fine return i don't really mind doing uh betting against that the fixtures do give me hope so i i hope i'm i'm right uh with Mbomo, i think he's cheap he's sort of tailed off i don't think i'd probably pick him if i was on a wild card this week um because the fixtures gradually are now getting tougher as well yeah. which is an ideal um and Sterling, I definitely wouldn't pick on wildcard. But again, I am backing um, him against a very poor loot, uh, Fulham defense who are 
you know, on the bottom of all the expected goals conceded charts, they've they've been very lucky with with the clean sheets they've had. It's been the case for a while. Leno keeps bailing them out, and with Chelsea, very good goalie, very good goalie. Yes, I know with Chelsea. Yes, they create chances. You've just got to be lucky to hit them uh, on a good day, and I I hope that good day comes on on Monday in in game week seven. That's that's about oh, me it. Too. Um, me too. It's been. Uh, it's been a very painful experience keeping keeping these guys, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll almost certainly reduce my exposure to just one Chelsea asset, so it's it's not too bad. I'm, I think Sterling still looks likely, um, and I will just give him one more game. And if he's terrible again, then I can pin him off in in game eight from Madison. Yeah, sure thing. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit, um, and ask you this: if if you were on wild card now. And you had to pick your your perfect five midfield. Give me give me a realistic um, kind of midfield. Don't you know? Don't don't say five of the of the premium players. Who would you be going for? Because what I'm trying to gauge here is how different is your current midfield to the midfield that you'd love to have. So if you just go through it player by Salah. player, who would you have? I would pick I would pick Salah. I would pick Son. I would also pick Madison because I'd want him from the run from. Yeah. Um, Let's say Game Week Eight onwards. I would also pick Diaby because Villa's fixtures are really nice, and it's effectively a transfer save down the line. I think even this this week it's a very good fixture against Brighton. I expect Villa to yeah. do well. Um, the fifth one is tricky, but I would probably pick a cheaper one because obviously if you're spending a lot on Salah, Son, and Holland, it means that some sacrifices have to be made. I would probably pick Gordon, even though he's on four yellows. Really, I okay. like the fact. Oh yeah, I like the fact that he's, um, he's now sort of close to being nailed with Barnes out for a while, and his numbers have been good. His uh, he's averaging over one point four big chances of almost per game, and his his non pen XGI has been very very impressive as well. And with you know we've all doubled up on the Newcastle defense. So the fixtures are great. We've already spoken about that. So I think Gordon could be a good filler um, in the weeks to come. Fair enough. Does it, not, does it not concern you a little bit that, I mean, we do have so many options in midfield this year, right? Is it not a little bit concerning that four of the of the players that you have in your team, you haven't just mentioned there in your, in your perfect midfield? They are, but I, I mean, this isn't a free hit team. This is a wildcard team. For, it's very true. Very say, true. Very true. Right? Yeah. Um, Madison will be in my team in, in game week 8 I don't see a world where he doesn't end up in my team yeah. and by game week 9 I'm, I think I will very likely have Diaby as well and if not then there's every chance that I wildcard in, in game week 9 and get Salah and all these guys anyway so I don't think it's it's the end of the world besides it is that season where you know you will be at the cost of repeating myself you will be avoiding some of these optimal picks or you know avoiding some of these good picks for optimal picks and it will be that case because such is the variety of of players right now that we can afford to have that it's very very difficult to nail nail the halls. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Okay, let's have a look at your AI recommended transfers. Um, and I think you're gonna like these. I really do. First of all, the recommended option, interestingly, is to bank your free. Now you've mentioned that you that you you don't want to play a Stupinian. This would mean playing a Stupinian. That's the recommendation. Bank your free transfer. Go again next week, as you said at the start, with with um with two frees. There is an alternative though, which is pretty much what you said. Chilwell out. It says to Shah here, probably because he's not flagged and Botman is, but pretty much Chilwell to a Newcastle defender, which is exactly in line with with what you've been saying the entire video. Exactly, and and the thing with uh, Chilwell is that even if I do bank the transfer this week, next week I'll again be in a position because next week Abore won't be an option next week. Uh, Stupanan is, is a very tough fixture. I think he's Liverpool next week. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I will need a defender next week as well. So might as well address it this week. It's true. I, I would definitely would do that transfer. He's injured and he's, you know, just not in the starting 11. Let's be completely honest. It's a definite sell. <laughs> yeah. What do we say about, about fancy players? That the most important thing is that they play, obviously, and, and get as many minutes as possible at the majority of the time. So uh, yeah, that makes complete sense to me. And Bakar, that is going to do it for this one. Unless there's anything that we've we've missed. I think we've covered a lot there. 
don't you think? I think we've covered everything. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to mention. Is uh, are we missing anything? I think Saka is 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 something a lot of people are uh, are considering selling. I think we can talk a bit about Saka. Saka, yeah, because he's I not he's him, not in your he, team. You you sold him recently. Yeah, yeah. Any if regrets? you own Saka, of course I regret. It. I mean, the guy got what ninety <laughs> points in, in across two weeks, but I sold uh, him for Sun, which is fine because Sun yeah. got more or less, more or less the same. Yeah, and you know I was. I also got Trippier in. So my transfers have been fine. And I do think Saka has been a bit lucky as well. His, his online data in the previous two games wasn't exactly all that great. But but besides that, if you own Saka and you're looking to sell, I think Sun has to be number one priority for the reasons we've already mentioned the video. Standout captain, game week eight, and the fixtures after that are great as well. And this is obviously assuming that Saka is ruled out by Arteta tomorrow, obviously. By all means, keep him if, if he's, he's not ruled out. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you already have, have Sun, then it's a very tricky discussion because then I assume you'd be in a position where you don't own one of the United guys or where you don't own Madison. And again, it, this would depend a lot on the wildcard strategy. Let's say if you're planning on wildcard in eight, then obviously I won't be bringing Madison in this week. Then I'd prefer one of the United guys. If you're sort of wildcarding in 10, then I probably would buy, buy Madison because the fixtures from Game Week 8 9 are really good. So yeah, again, a lot of this is dependent on on the wildcard strategy, and a lot of is dependent as well on on, on the flags and and the, the presses that we get over the the next couple of days. Recording this Thursday afternoon, we're gonna have to wait and see what your what your moves are because who knows? I mean, if you get a couple of flags, it could change everything. Now, thankfully, you don't have Absolutely. Saka and Madison, who are the, the the main concerns. But with Botman, if he gets ruled out for sure, that's obviously gonna change your transfer. So, guys, if you'd like to know what the car ends up doing for sure, locked in. Then sign up once again to Fantasy Football Hub and check out his team reveal on Saturday morning. Once again, final push. This is it. Last couple of days now, take advantage of the offer. It's a win-win situation. You get your entire money refunded if you do not win your mini league. Sounds pretty good to me. Bakar, good luck this game week. Green Arrow incoming. And um, yeah. I hope we, so. We, well, me too. Me too. We, we can push on. We can push on. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's reconvene for Game Week 8.